Good morning. I am Carissa and I live in Southern Indiana and it's gardening season, but I'm also pregnant. Four months pregnant actually. Let's see, you can see the belly. <laughs> Not too big, but getting there. Um, and I just wanted to do a fun series this summer, uh, which is pregnant gardening series and show everyone kind of the reality versus kind of what you see on TV and on the movies and other people with YouTube videos who have these perfect gardens that look just immaculate. This year, my garden and me have been struggling a little bit. Um, I've been dealing with a lot of nausea and it's just been horrible. Oh my gosh. And even though I'm on my 16th week, it's, I mean, even just a couple days ago, I was getting sick multiple times. Um, so I have my good days, but definitely it's been hard to garden and keep up with all the tasks. And I just, I love gardening. So I've still been doing it just at a slower pace and just a more easy route for me this year. Um, and I'm just gonna film this from my phone today and take it a little bit easy. I have some seeds that I wanna put down, just a couple rows, nothing crazy. And I was gonna give everyone a tour really quick of my garden, it's pretty bare. <laughs> and again, I'm in Southern Indiana. Um, I'm trying to think of what my zone is. I'll have to look that up. Um, and we are, let's see, I think it's May 12th today or May 13th. So, um, so yeah, you'll, you'll see where I'm at with this. I know a lot of people have a lot more completed than me, but again, I'm really just, um, giving myself some grace this year and going to just take care of my health and take it easy. And I just wanted to film this so that other people who are maybe struggling with their gardens, struggling with either, um, their energy, their health, whether it's pregnancy, whether it's something else that you have going on health wise, this will show you that like, you're not alone. There are other people who their gardens are not gonna come together as perfectly as everybody else is. Okay, so let's take a look. All right, so here's the garden, very bare bones. Like I said, haven't been feeling well. Honestly, in my zone, you're actually supposed to wait till after Mother's Day, so I don't feel too bad. We are just after Mother's Day and I do have a lot planted already. It's just that it's not as organized as I would like it to be, especially on this side, um, but that's okay. So here are the peppers and tomatoes. Last year I got the peppers and tomatoes from Whipkers, which is a local um, greenhouse that's down the road. However, this year I got um, my tomatoes and peppers from a neighbor who's about a mile down the road. And Whipkers is pretty nice. They have mostly local stuff, but I will say not all of it. Like for example, their watermelon was from Atlanta. I remember something else being from out of state. So I feel good about getting these from the neighbors. Also her jalapenos, a couple of these are Goliath. Last year, her jalapenos were so much bigger than mine and I was just extremely jealous. So I'm excited to get to um, try out the Goliath jalapenos. And over here is just a variety. I know that we have Bounty, um, Bounty Agent, Beauty King, Italian Beef Steak, Indiana Reds, and something else. Um, so I definitely got like a really good variety of tomatoes. Uh, this is empty for now. We just have a couple marigolds. So what I think I'm going to do is actually make a path here. Last year, I didn't have any paths. I packed this full. I did, I did um, square foot gardening. It worked out so well. Like it was just, the garden was bountiful and there was plenty to go around. We actually ended up giving away some um, to our neighbors. We made like a little um, garden stand where we put fresh veggies out and everyone could just come grab tomatoes and peppers and all sorts of things. Um, but this year I'm not going to do square foot gardening. I'm doing more like row style and I'm going to make sure that I actually have paths to walk. And so I'm probably going to um, make some paths between the marigolds over there with bricks that we have from our former koi fish garden. This is basil and a couple marigolds. We have potatoes. So last year I did a whole patch of potatoes and it was fine for last year, but this year I'm not gonna be able to really like be reaching that far. So I'm strategically making things a little bit simpler for me when I have a big belly. So the potatoes this year are in um, these uh, round barrels basically. Now I did have the thought to get wood chip mulch. <laughs> But again, wasn't feeling well. Matt has been so helpful. He actually went and got an entire load of soil and brought it in and put it in here himself. Um, he put the tomato cages up for me. He's just been very helpful. But the one thing that we didn't get to was doing the actual um, wood chips to put on top of the potatoes and the garden in general. So I've already planted some seedlings here, but the potatoes are doing pretty well. They're already sprouting as you see. And these have been in the ground maybe like three weeks. So I'm really happy with them. I didn't firmly pack these. It's just pretty loose. So hopefully these fill. The smaller ones over here have two potatoes each. And then these two larger ones have three potatoes each. 
this is empty other than these marigolds. Again, this will be my wide, wide path. So it'd be like an L-shaped path right there. Um, over here, I have kale. So this is actually from a different neighbor, one that's like right next door, I got the kale. I just put this up really quick um, to keep the insects off, but I'm gonna end up doing a really, a, a nicer style, just low key fencing around here for the dogs. Um, and then, cause let's see, let me find some dog footprints for you. Okay, look at that. That's where the dogs have been and because they like to play in here during off season. So I always have to put a barrier. Thinking about making a fence with these bamboo poles and some hemp rope. That'll just let them know to stay out. We don't really have a big issue with other animals. The deer seem to stay out because of the fence that we have. And um, we have three dogs. And then really the only thing we dealt with last year when I had corn in this corner, the raccoons destroyed the corn. I basically got maybe three heads of corn um, or three cobs or whatever. So it was really depressing. <laughs> Those raccoons, ah! So, but this year I'm not planting any corn. If Matt wants to plant corn, he said he'll do it in a separate area. Um, but there's there's nothing really in here that I think the raccoons are gonna really go for. Last year, we didn't even have to worry about rabbits. I never had any issues with the lettuce getting eaten, nothing. It's um, really awesome. So really, this is just for insects because I watch another YouTube video it's a it is a gentleman with his dog i can't remember his name but he gave the advice that with any like leafy green vegetables and other vegetables um the biggest thing that brings in the fungus and the issues with growth is insects so if you cover things with insects you're actually correcting like 75 percent of the issue so or maybe even more maybe it's a 95 percent so i have these the kale covered for now but again i'm going to end up covering the entire garden once it's more um, established so with these few rows i have um collards spinach french curly lettuce and then butter lettuce already um planted so i'll have to thin it out whenever it gets to that point um over here i wonder what this is i don't quite remember i also have um beets so i'm gonna today be planting um Oh wait, no, I, st I still need to plant the beets. Carrots, carrots is what I have planted, but today I'm gonna be doing beets and cabbage. And then as you see, I have a couple volunteer plants coming up. And you know what that looks like? Potatoes. And I did have last year, the potatoes were right here. So I bet you <laughs> there's probably a couple potato plants that are gonna be growing right there, which is perfectly fine. Um, I'm gonna see what happens and we'll go from there. So yeah, so that was the tour of just the garden. Um, we also have fruit trees i'll do a separate video because i actually need to spray those for insects we have one fruit tree that is fruiting and i actually need to thin it out i should have thinned it out earlier but again i've just been so sick with morning sickness that everything's just kind of gotten put on hold so i'll do a separate video showing that and then we have some wild herbs growing like oregano and rosemary and all sorts of stuff that we'll do a different walkthrough so last year i didn't really use this much but i'm going to be using this a lot this is a knee pad and matt's mom um got it for me she's so sweet so i'm definitely going to be using this a lot um to garden with and the way i'm going to garden is basically if i can reach it then i'll do it but if i can't reach it being on my knees then i'm not going to go that far with it like i said last year i had zero paths basically i was like tiptoeing between like bushes of peppers and herbs and um, columns of peas and beans and corns. And it was really fun. It was fine. It was fine for last year. It was really like awesome. And there was just uh, bountiful uh, vegetables. But this year I need to just be careful with how much I'm stretching and um, the pressure I'm putting on my back. So I am going to be just using the knee board and then seeing how far I can actually reach. And that is how much I will plant. And so we're going to do two rows right here all the way across of the beets and the cabbage. And so I'm gonna put my board down. These don't have to be deep at all. So um, I'll be able to just basically sprinkle these. And here are my beets and here's the cabbage. Where I'm gonna go in the middle of. And I'm barely gonna make a path because my beets only need to be like a half inch down. So I'm gonna make it too deep of the crust, the trench, whatever you want to call it. All right, I'm gonna go with beets first. And the beets of course say like one per inch, but I'm just dropping them as I go. No way. I said I will thin these out. And I heard from someone last year that these actually like to be crowded. Mine were definitely crowded and they came in pretty well. So now I'm just going to lift my knee pad, move over. And I'm sinking. This is so fluffy that I'm sinking. That's why I think I'm going to put um, bricks in after a while so that I can um, walk around the bricks. And we're going to continue our line. Going as straight as I can. It's more seed. It's not the worst thing going in with extra seed, too, because you never know if there's oops. That was a lot. If there's bad seed, I'll start to see that another sprinkle right after. All right. 
monster from this side. There we go. Snow is gonna go ahead and cover her up. Not fishing on too hard. Just a little bit so that they are super simple. Nothing too complicated. I just some of my feet to seize. No big deal. Not all of them are lost. And even if they were, oh, we're in the right spot for them to jump out. Just rip that up. This might be rocky. Let's just rip that up. All right. Perfect. That was super simple. So now I'm going to go in and start my side row. So I'm just going to see you a little bit. Here are my seeds. Just right here. Okay, so here's my row right here. Here's the line to where I'm thinking not as far as I in. So I'm going to do the other rock. Cabbage right here. And I'll give this plenty of space for the cabbage row too. The beads actually don't need that much space, I would think. Um, because they're green plants, they're straight up. The cabbage is going to get massive. So, and they also just need half an inch down. So I'm just barely going to make a trench. Nothing crazy. And so, being curious, what we do to like keep our soil fertile is with the koi pond, we're actually putting the sludge from the koi pond into the garden bed, and we till the sludge in. We also, after um, greens or anything like that in here, um, but I will use it for a few months and like put anything from coffee grounds, textiles, and all that stuff, and just straight in here. And all that gets tilled together. So, it's pretty cool. Man, even that little bit of stretching. My lower back hurts. My like lower belly hurts, like right, right here. Good times, good times, guys. So the style of fencing that I'm going for this year is uh, basically these bamboo sticks and hemp rope. And I'll explain why, so, but let me show you. Just some bamboo sticks and I'm gonna wrap hemp rope around them to make a barrier for, cause again, it's mainly for the dogs. Last year I did those cute decorative um, garden fencing. So you've probably seen those everywhere. Lowe's, Walmart, you can get them anywhere. You can order from Amazon, white, black, green. Um, and they can have different designs. So we had white and they were still like your typical like iron, I guess is what you would call them. Like, but they're like moldable um, where they can bend <laughs> is what I'm saying. Not moldable, but bendable. Um, I felt like once all of the foliage had grown with the veggies, the foliage was getting, was growing out through like the ornateness of the fence and then getting caught and like ripping the foliage. And then I was having trouble. So that's the first trouble that I had with it. The second thing is that they can rust and I don't want rust in the garden, obviously. And it's something that you can't really avoid when it's in the ground it's raining or you're watering anything like that so it's suggest not doing that if you're thinking about using those type of fencing and i'll show you what i'm talking about um but they're already they already look rusted and so yeah i just don't think that that's something like healthy especially if you're trying to do like an actual organic garden then you don't want to use things like that either way just a little side tidbit so yeah so i'm gonna get started on this fence so here are the other ones I'd love to do four longer ones or taller, I say, for the corner. I'm just eyeballing it. It doesn't really need to be perfect. I'd love for it to be, but that's just not feasible. And I don't know how the whole wrapping up is going to go. I tried to do hemp fences before. Um, I did have a hemp fence. And here's the hemp I'm going to use this year. Burn green. So we'll call that color. Not copies for me. I got these last year. They're like six feet tall. And that was a little bit of water I need. Ah! Oh my god. <laughs> Real life on the homestead. A bumblebee. Bumblebee just tried to get me, guys. It's not cool. <laughs> oh my god. It's probably thinking, you're the one who startled me, lady. What are you freaking out about? These are all wonky. I got these from Lowe's. And I got the tall six foot ones because last year my tomato plants were ginormous. Oh my god, they're taller than me. They're taller than that. We had to put like, all of these um, bamboo. I had to recruit some help. I got a handsome mat. <laughs> I think I'm just Every time I wrap him, it ends up sagging and touching the soil. So, that's gonna be expert. 
into the stadium. But now that he's doing it, it doesn't look that complicated. I don't know why I didn't get it to work. Thank you so much, Matt. I just have to celebrate Mother's Day with Matt as well. And I'm going to go home, guys. Because of the baby in the belly. Probably this far, I'll just fast forward it. I'm still going to, like, film you, but I'm going to fast forward throughout this. You? What? No, we're showing you doing it. I only have one hand. I can do that. I'm going to do that. Thank you. Is it okay? Okay, you can push it down as much as you need. Especially when it's right, you want them pretty Amazing. Wow. It looks so good. You can barely even tell. So it looks much better than putting up clunky fencing as well, like the ones that we had last year. Can't even see it. Love it. But it'll be plenty for the dogs to keep them out. Yay! All right. So I got everything done that I wanted to today. I feel super accomplished. It wasn't even that much, right? But I feel very proud of myself. <laughs> um, but it just goes to show you, you don't have to do like move mountains and stuff. Just chip away at it each week. It doesn't even have to be chip away at it each day. No, each week is fine. <laughs> Every seven days, why not? I mean, I, I really didn't do that much, right? I put up the dog fencing. I didn't even put it up. Well, I put half it up. I put the poles in the ground. Matt put up the hemp string. So that's done. I got um, the beets and cabbages in. So just two rows of seeds not even that much and I feel great I'm glad that I got it done um, you know it's just hard to do when you're really busy or you're having low energy or you're not feeling well gardening can definitely take a lot out of you it's hot today it was supposed to be I think it just in the 60s but it's like high 70s right now I believe and I have a long sleeve on the sun's like beating down on me so I mean I'm definitely gonna be sitting in the AC now <laughs> after this um, but the next thing I'm gonna do is the fruit trees. So I will definitely be filming that. It'll be the first time that I'm pruning fruit trees. I've pruned the, our decorative trees. And that is honestly, when it's just a decorative tree, you don't have that much like anxiety about it, but I don't wanna like ruin the fruit trees. I think it takes a lot to ruin a tree in general, so I shouldn't be too worried. But I'm also going to insect proof that fruit tree that is fruiting right now, yay. Um, but yeah, so. Please join me on that. Thank you so much for being here today and joining me. Um, again, let's all just have a great gardening season. I'm so excited. Bye.